Okay, so make sure talks and projects are submitted to me on Google Classroom prior to the beginning of class. All right, everyone follow me there. Okay, because they are due at the start of class tomorrow, so make sure that I have your talks and projects before that time. Um, other things coming up, remember that your reactions lab report is due on Friday. Okay, also on Google Classroom prior to the start of class, so please make sure that that is also completed on time. Okay, so you don't lose any late marks. You've got a couple of things here okay, coming up very quickly. Then, on Tuesday, you have your unit exam. Now, tomorrow, I will give you a review package of sorts. Okay? What that will contain is like an outline kind of page that has a few uh, you know, kind of suggestions for things to, to go over, okay, a few uh, old questions and things like that. And then I'm also going to give you something I put together yesterday, which is some old exam questions that I no longer use. Some of them are multiple choice, and some of them are written response. It's basically the same format that your unit exam will be. Okay, part of your unit exam is multiple choice, and part of it is written response. Most of it is written, okay, because um, I don't believe multiple choice can test everything. Okay, I'm in complete disagreement with Alberta Learning on that one, but too bad for them. They're wrong, and I'm right. Okay, um, so you will get uh, a, a written part, which is actually good for you because then you get to show all of your work and you get part marks for all of that. Okay, it's way easier okay, um, to do well on a, on a test like that. Okay, so just be aware those things are coming up. My suggestion to you is this. When I give you the review package, do the review package over the weekend. All right, do the, the questions that are old exam questions. Okay, look at the, uh, the review uh, sheet that has kind of old, some, some old questions, but mostly suggestions on things to do. Do that over the weekend, because if you leave it for the night before the exam, if you don't study for this exam until Monday night, you're cooked. Okay, there's too much for you to do in one night. All right, you do not want to pull an all-nighter. That is not an effective way to study. You will blank in the middle of the test. Okay, because your short-term memory is not designed to hold all of that information. So start on the weekend, do this kind of stuff. The other benefit of that is you can ask me about stuff you don't get on Monday in Scheduled Helper at lunch, whereas if you wait till Monday night, you do not have that opportunity. All right, so suggestions there. Okay, I'll give you that review package either today or tomorrow, probably tomorrow, okay, and you can uh, start having a look at it. All right, especially the old exam questions because that gives you an idea of wording, okay, how I'm going to word questions, what kinds of things I ask, okay, um, you know, and, and how I ask them. So definitely worth your while to go over that, okay. Um, there's ob it's obviously not a full test. Like, I don't have all the questions on there. I think there's only about 25, and your test has 30, I think. Okay, multiple choice, and I think there's five written on there, and your test has six or something. But, I mean, it gives you an idea. Okay? Everyone with me on that? All right, so those are the suggestions for review for the weekend. What we're going over today is the very, very last thing in this unit, the mole equation. All right? So, what's the mole? The mole is a unit that measures or tells us about the number of particles of a material that we might be dealing with. Okay? Oh, I got a little different. Okay. Okay. So it tells us the number of particles that we're dealing with. All right? Because when we're dealing with matter, we can't talk about individual atoms. They're too small. Okay? There's no way we'd ever see them be able to measure them, be able to count them, okay? It's just, they're, they're just too small, they're, di they're difficult to deal with. So, we have a number, okay, called the mole, that represents a very large number of molecules or atoms or whatever it is we're dealing with, okay? A mole works just like a dozen. How many are in a dozen? Twelve, okay? Well, a mole represents a fixed number as well, okay? A mole represents this many. a lot bigger than a dozen, okay? A mole represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles. That could, be an atom, that could be atoms or it could be molecules, depending on what you're dealing with, okay? If it's an element, you're dealing with atoms. If it's a molecule, if it's a compound or a molecular element, you're dealing with a molecule, okay? So it represents this many. That is 602 with 21 zeros behind it. It's big, all right? Now, you're probably thinking, wow, if I had a mole of something, that would be like a giant pile okay, of something. Actually, it's not. 
one mole of water would be about three capfuls from a water bottle. Okay, so if you unscrewed the little plastic cap and filled that about three times, you'd have around that number of molecules of water. Okay, that tells you how small, gives you some perspective on how small an atom is, okay, how small a molecule is. To have a huge number like that take up that small a space. All right, one mole of water is 18 milliliters. Okay, 18 milliliters. A can of pop is 355. Okay, so we're talking about very, very small things here. And that's why we have this number. It represents a very, very large number of very, very small things. Okay? And it makes it much more manageable okay, than having to say this number all the time. I can just say, I have one mole, or I have three moles, or I have five moles. Okay? In the same way that we use a dozen. Okay? We don't say I have 36 donuts. We usually say we have, how many dozen is 36? Three. Three dozen. Okay? If I have 24, I have two dozen. Right? That's kind of the way we think about it. It's quicker. Okay? It's a number, or a unit, sorry, that represents a fixed number. All right. So that's key point number one. Okay? Key point number two, understand the relationship between moles, mass, and molar mass. Okay? And that's going to be a mathematical thing that we're going to deal with in the mole equation. Okay? The mole equation looks like this. Little n equals little m over capital M. That shows you the lack of creativity of chemists. Our alphabet has 26 letters. They had a three variable formula in which they used the same letter twice. And the only other letter they used sounds like the letter they used twice. N equals M over M. Not confusing at all. Okay? So we have to remember what each thing represents and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay? All right. So, first thing, the concept of the mole. Okay, the mole idea was invented by a guy named Avogadro. Okay, you'll see his, his picture, why he named it the mole. No, he doesn't have a big mole on his face, but he looks kind of like a mole. Okay, he's got like this very weird facial structure with a tiny little chin and this kind of bulbous forehead. Okay, anyway, calls it the mole. And because we are so busy and we have so little time, we abbreviate it M-O-L because that saves us time. I mean, think about it. Our society is so, bu so busy that we have an abbreviation for at. Think about it. That's dumb. It's a two-letter word, but we have an abbreviation for it. Okay? All right. So anyway, back to the mole. Okay? We can't possibly count atoms or molecules because they're too small. And even if we could see them, we would be dealing with such large numbers, it would take days or even weeks to count even small, number or small amounts of them. All right? So we don't want to have to do that. So we have this mole that represents a large number because it's much, much easier to deal with. Okay? And like we said... It works the same as a dozen. Okay, a dozen always represents 12, where a mole always represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23. No, I was just sorry. That, I was just illustrating something. No, that's actually a part of the slide. That line there is a part of the slide. Yeah. That's why I've, on the first slide, part of this was crossed out. That's <laughs> the line went through there. Yeah, it's just bad formatting on my part. All right, so the way they arrived at this, the way Avogadro arrived at this number, okay, it wasn't just a number he pulled out of his head, oh, like 6.02. Okay, obviously, he didn't just do that. Okay, what he did is he took a gram of hydrogen gas, and he said, I'm going to use the simplest element there is to determine my kind of magic number, okay, my mole number here, and I'm going to use that number for everything else. However many particles, in this case individual atoms, of hydrogen there are in a gram, that'll be the magic number for everything. All right? So, because at, the, at his time, people had an idea of what the mass of a proton was and what the mass of an electron was, they were able to roughly figure out how many atoms of hydrogen there were in one gram. All right? And it ended up being this many. He said, all right, I'm going to figure out now the mass of everything else for this many particles of everything else. All right, so for hydrogen, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of hydrogen has a mass of 1 gram, because that's the one he used to make it up. Okay, for helium, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 um, atoms of helium has a mass of 4 grams. Okay, for lithium, 6.94 grams. For beryllium, 9.01 grams, and so on. Okay, as atoms get bigger, Obviously, 
the mass of this of this number of atoms has to get bigger. All right? Everyone follow me there? Okay? Cuz hydrogen's only got one proton and one electron, whereas helium has two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons, right? It's a much bigger much bigger atom. Okay? So it's got it's got to have more mass. Is that making some sense? Okay. All right. So the mass of one mole of a substance is known as the molar mass, and that's what we see up here. Okay? These are essentially, we call them the atomic masses, okay? but they really are the mass of one mole of each element. What do I do if I want to find the molar mass of a compound that has more than one element? Exactly. Take the mass of everything involved and add them up. What if, though, I'm dealing with something like water? Okay. Right. Okay. I take however many hydrogens there are, multiply hydrogen's molar mass by how many hydrogens there are in here, and then add it to oxygen. So for this one, okay, I know that the atomic mass or molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole. Okay. There are two hydrogens in here, so I'd multiply that by two. Okay. And then add that to the molar mass or atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16 grams per mole. Right? When I do that, I find that the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole, because it's the mass of one mole. Right? That's why the units are grams per mole. Right? So 18.02 grams. Is that very much? No. Like we said, that's like three capfuls okay, from a bottle of water. Right? Very, very small amount of water. Okay. Is that a relatively straightforward process? Okay. It gets a little bit confusing if you're dealing with, let's say, polyatomic ions. So let's say maybe we had magnesium nitrate. Okay. Properly swapped and dropped, it looks like that. Okay. Now how do I calculate the molar mass of magnesium nitrate? Okay. Uh, nope, not magnesium by two. This two only applies to what? The nitrate. So there's only one magnesium here, and that's why being able to write formulas is crucial, and being able to understand what they mean is also crucial. In this formula, there's only one magnesium. So we're looking at 24.31. Uh, okay. So there's the mass of magnesium, 24.31, plus how many nitrogens? Two. Right. This says that there are two nitrates. That means there's two nitrogens and how many oxygens? Six. All right. So nitrogen's 14.01, and there's two of it. Okay. And there's six oxygens. 16 times six. All right. That will give me the molar mass of okay, magnesium nitrate. So. 24.31 plus 28.02. So I just did that one in my head. Okay. Um, plus 16 times 6. All right. So the molar mass, the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of magnesium nitrate is 148.33 grams per mole. Okay. I uh, just you can download it various places. Okay. TI eighty three emulator. Okay, grams per mole. How important are units? Very. If an answer doesn't have units, that answer is wrong. Whether the number is right or not. Okay? Because in science, if you don't put units on it, I don't know whether you mean apples, oranges. Old ladies in wheelchairs, elephants on steroids, I don't know. So it's meaningless. So if you don't put units on it, it is unfortunately wrong because that's just a number, okay? And it doesn't tell me what it's measuring, all right? So you must have units on everything. For molar mass, those units are grams per mole, okay? If we're measuring in mass, what units are we going to use? 
grams, actually. We won't use kilograms because our units for molar mass are grams per mole, unless we were using kilograms per mole. Okay, then we could use kilograms, but we were using grams. Chemistry, the way you remember it, chemistry deals with atoms. Those are small. Chemistry always deals with grams. In physics, we do things big. We deal with kilograms in physics, okay, because we do things right. I mean big. I mean right. Okay, yeah. Everyone follow me there. Okay, and then the units for moles are... It's a trick. Moles. Okay, the units for moles are moles. Yeah. All right, so this is how we calculate okay, molar mass of various substances. So obviously, your periodic table is important here. All right, if we're dealing with polyatomic ions, we calculate molar mass element by element. Okay, we do it piecemeal. All right, I want you guys to do these ones. Calculate the molar mass of those compounds there. Yeah, I'll give you a couple minutes. All right, let's look at the first two here. Just make sure everyone's kind of on the right track. Okay, like we said, in order to calculate molar mass or do anything with the mole equation, which we're going to use later, okay, you have to understand what a chemical formula means. In this chemical formula, how many sodium are there? How many chlorine are there? Okay, that's what we have to understand. Okay, so that means I take the molar mass of sodium, 22.99, there's only one of it, so I don't have to multiply it by anything, okay, and add it to the molar mass of one chlorine atom, 35.45. All right, so when I do that, 22.99 plus 35.45, okay, it gives me 58.44 grams per mole. Uh, yes, I would, because I don't know how you would arrive at that. Okay, I only have two, right? I've only got two decimal places here, and uh, it's 22.99 on your periodic table. Okay, don't use mine. Okay, mine mine has way more decimal places than yours does. Okay, I'm using the ones that are off of your periodic table. Okay. All right, everyone, follow me on number one. Okay, so number one's, that one's pretty basic. Okay, number two brings in one of the little subscript numbers. Okay, in this compound, how many iron are there? One. How many bromine are there? Three. All right, so iron is 55.85, and bromine is 79.90, right? Okay, and there are three of them. So I have to multiply the bromine only by three and add it to the mass of one iron just like it shows in this formula. All right, so when I do that, okay, I'm going to have 55.85 plus 79.9 times 3. All right, that's going to give me 295.55 grams per mole. Okay, so we only multiply if we've got little subscript numbers that tell us there's more than one of something. Okay, if there's just one of something, you just write the number. Joshua, question. Only when it's by itself. Okay, in a compound it could be anything, right? Okay, in this case it's three. Okay, let's quickly look at number three here, guys. So for number three we've got diphosphorus pentaoxide, all right, so the little numbers are going to be important here, and phosphorus uh, is 30.97, I believe, okay, times 2, okay, plus 5 oxygen, so that's 16 times 5, so 30.97 times 2 plus 16 times 5 is 141.94 grams per mole. Okay. How many people are done four and five? All right, I'll give you one more minute on four and five, and then we'll go through them together too. All right, well, let's look at four and five here. Well, I'm going to do number four first. You guys, as long as it takes me to do number four. Okay. All right. So I've got ammonium sulfate. Okay. Now, what I have to again understand is what do all the small numbers mean? What do the brackets mean? Well, I've got NH4 in brackets. In each ammonium ion, there's one nitrogen and four hydrogens. But it's in brackets and there's a two outside, which means there's how many of them? How many ammoniums, that is? Two. All right. So that doesn't mean, that means now that I've got two nitrogens and how many hydrogens? Eight, right. So that's what we have to remember there. All right, so I'm going to have nitrogen, 14.01, times two. 
okay, plus 8.08, that's 8 hydrogens, okay, plus 1 sulfur, 32.06, okay, is that right? 07? 32.07, okay, and there's 4 oxygen, so 16 times 4 is 64, okay, all right, so we add those together. So we have 28.02 plus 8.08, okay, plus 32.07 plus 64. All right, so we're looking at 132.17 grams per mole. Okay, is that making sense? That's as tricky as they get, really. Okay, when you have a polyatomic ion with brackets, that's as tricky as this gets. All right, for number five, we've got scandium, which I never use, so I don't know its number. 44.96, and there are two of them. Okay, plus how many carbons? Three. Okay, so 12.01 times three, okay, plus nine oxygens. All right, so we're looking at 269.95 grams per mole. Okay, everybody all right with those? All right, that's, I'm just going to assume from here on that, you, you know, you guys can multiply and add, and I'm not going to spend any time on that because I think you guys can get that. Okay, all right. Now, the other thing we got to look at is interpreting a chemical equation. What does a chemical equation tell us? Because we put in those numbers, those coefficients when we're balancing, okay? And we're just doing, going, hey, I got to make sure I got the same enough stuff on both sides because law of conservation of something says I got to do that, okay? But a little more than that, okay, we have to understand that that means, or what does it mean when I put in a coefficient? So right here, I don't have a coefficient. There's no coefficient on nitrogen. So how many molecules of nitrogen gas are in this compound, are in this reaction? Okay, there's one molecule of nitrogen. How many atoms of nitrogen? Two. Okay, how many molecules of hydrogen are in here? Three. Okay, and that's how many atoms of hydrogen? Six. Right? Three times two, there's six hydrogen atoms. Okay, and on the product side, same thing, because we balance the equation. Two atoms of nitrogen, three atoms of, or sorry, six atoms of hydrogen, and how many molecules of nitrogen trihydride? Two. Right? This stuff is nitrogen trihydride or ammonia. Okay, there's two of it. That's what that coefficient there means. Okay, so it's important for us to be able to interpret a chemical reaction, especially when you go on to Chem 20, where you're going to do something called reaction stoichiometry. Okay, and what reaction stoichiometry means in English is being able to calculate masses of different parts of the reaction based on how much of something else you have. Right? So this is an industrial process that's used in the production of fertilizer. It would be useful if, let's say, you know, let's say a farmer comes in and he says, I need two tons of ammonia. All right? You don't want to make more than two tons because maybe you won't be able to sell it before it goes bad. Okay? And you don't want to shortchange the guy because he asked you for two tons. So if you have two tons of this, you would need to be able to figure out how much hydrogen do I need and how much nitrogen do I need. Okay? Now, and when I said that in the last class, the person, uh, the first person who kind of answered without thinking was like, well, you need two tons. It's got to equal the same on both sides. I need two tons of reactants, yes, because I'm going to have two tons of products. I, yes, that's right. But does it mean I need two tons of this? Does it mean I need one ton of this? I don't know. I need more hydrogen than I need nitrogen. But is hydrogen way lighter than nitrogen is? Yeah, it is, all right? So being able to calculate how much of each thing there is, is important, all right? If we look at this and start calculating masses, okay, let's say that these numbers here don't represent individual molecules and atoms, because if they did, we'd never be able to even see this reaction, okay? Um, what it means is, let's say that these numbers represent a mole, okay? So in this case, I have three moles of hydrogen gas, and I have one mole of nitrogen gas, and that's going to produce two moles of ammonia, right? Let's figure out how much mass that is. 
each nitrogen is how much? Fourteen point zero one. Okay, each one of these is fourteen point zero one. So I have twenty-eight point zero two grams of nitrogen here. Okay, and since I have six hydrogens, I have six point zero six grams of hydrogen. Agreed? How much nitrogen trihydride or ammonia am I going to make then? Did, did Siri know the answer? All right, 28.02 plus 6.06, .06, right? Is that what this reaction is saying? I react this and this, so what I get over there, it better equal what these two combined are. Would you agree? All right, so that's going to be, what, 34.08 grams, right? So you can see where this would be useful in t determining, especially if you had more than one product, okay? Maybe you have a reaction where you only actually want one of the products, and you need to know, well, how much hydrogen do I need in order to make, you know, 35 grams of substance X, okay? And that's where reaction stoichiometry becomes useful. That way you're not wasting a lot of material. You're reacting just enough of everything to produce what you want. All right? Everyone follow me there? Okay? And when you go on to Chem 30 and you go on to university, okay, you'll have to do this calculation, and then you'll have to calculate your what's called percent yield, which is when you do the lab, did you... How much of that stuff did you actually get compared to how much you were supposed to get? Because no reaction is perfect in a lab. Okay? And uh, I know lots of times in my chem lab I didn't get the amount I was supposed to get. Okay? And if I didn't have more than 90% yield, I, got, I lost marks. I lost marks a lot. I wasn't very good in the lab in chemistry in university. Okay? Mostly because my TA didn't speak any English. The only words I understood him say were at the end of the semester when he said, Thank you for opportunity to learn English. <laughs> but that's beside the point. Okay. He was really good at chemistry. He just couldn't tell us about it. That was the only problem. Okay. All right. So we got uh, looking at a reaction in different ways. This reaction could mean one molecule of nitrogen reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to produce two molecules of nitrogen trihydride. But it's unlikely that we would write a reaction like that because it's too small to notice. Okay. More likely it means one mole, three moles, and two moles. Okay. Or maybe it means... 10 moles, 30 moles, and 20 moles. It's just a factor, right? As long as the ratio is always 1 to 3 to 2, it can be any amount. All right? Everyone follow me there? So that's what we mean by interpreting. You're never going to have to do a calculation like this. Okay? I was just showing you kind of where you're going to head if you go into Chem 20. All right, so that's what we just talked about. Particles, okay, could mean particles. Okay, this is Avogadro. See what I mean? It looks kind of molish. Weird. Okay. How many people have seen the movie Austin Powers? Okay. Okay, and then we said the the equation could also represent moles. Okay, so we've already talked about that. Okay. Um, the most important information that a chemical reaction provides, okay, is the coefficients, okay, because they tell us the ratios that everything reacts in. All right, and then we also said it could be mass, and I showed you how to calculate the mass there. Again, that's something not something you're going to be asked to do okay, in uh, Science 10, but it's important still. All right, the mole equation. Here's the mole equation. N equals little m over big M. It's important to know what each part of that reaction or each part of that equation stands for. Okay, so N is the number of moles. Okay, so the units for N are always going to be moles, M-O-L. Okay, little m is the mass of the material. And that's always going to be in grams. Okay, and capital M okay, is the molar mass. All right, and we showed just a minute ago okay, how you calculate that. And that is always going to be in grams per mole. Okay? So you got this equation, N equals little m over big M. Some good news for you, you'll never use that equation to calculate capital M, because where can you always get capital M from? From your periodic table. Okay. What if I had to manipulate this equation? I didn't want N. Let's say I had N and I had big M and I wanted to solve for little m. How would I find how to solve for little m? Uh, 
uh, not subtract. Okay, what would I multiply? Awesome. Jane's a superstar because she's the first person who has given me the right answer. You know what everybody else always says to me? Mr. Quidditch, you can just draw a triangle. No! Triangles are stupid! And I want to you-know-what slap. Whoever has been teaching you about using triangles to do algebra because they are doing you a massive disservice. Okay? They have crippled your math ability. And you will not use triangles in my class or I will kill you. <laughs> okay? Here's why. Okay? In this course, in Science 10, you'll have to use this formula. VF minus VI over T. Got a triangle for that one? Okay, how about this one? T equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Got a triangle that'll solve that one? Triangles suck. Okay, they only work for three variable formulas like this. Thus, they are useless. Okay? Because they will only cripple you when it gets to physics. And because I teach physics, okay, we don't use triangles. In fact, there is no one in this science department who will allow you to use a triangle to do any math. Okay? Never, ever. Ever. Okay? No triangles. Okay? They are crippling your ability to do math. Now, here's what we need to do with... Um, with that formula, okay? We're just going to scroll down a little ways here. Okay, and I'm going to do this. N. Okay, I want to manipulate this equation here. N equals little m over big M. I want to get little m by itself. Jane said, what do I do? I multiply both sides by m. Essentially, I move m over here and do this, okay? Not terribly difficult, right? All right, guys, algebra is easy. Take it from me, okay? I am actually, believe it or not, terrible at math, okay? If you came in and asked me for help with your grade 10 math, I would not be able to help you, all right? That whole F word factoring, okay, I can't do that, okay? I don't remember how. I blocked it out as a traumatic experience in my life, okay? I, I got through university physics, however, okay? Because I remembered two rules about algebra. Okay, here are the rules. If I want to move something, I do the opposite of what's being done to it. Right now, I'm dividing by capital M. If I want to move it, I should multiply. multiply. That's the opposite, right? The second rule, what I do to one side, I do to the other side. So if I multiply this side by M, I better multiply this side by M. Well, when I go like that M cancels on that side, and lo and behold, I have the same thing I had just a minute ago. Okay, big M times little n equals little m. All right, everyone follow me there? You only need to remember two rules about algebra to be successful in high school science. Not math. There are other rules probably for math, but I don't know what they are. Okay, these two rules will get you through. Okay, got me through university physics. Okay, I'm not trying to brag here, but I actually got 100% on my physics final in university. Okay, and these are the only two rules for algebra I know. Okay, you are probably better at math than I am. Okay, I am not good at math, and I can still do this. Okay, so I shouldn't need to see any triangles anywhere, ever. Okay, my rant about triangles is over now. Okay, all right. Here, okay is what we need to do. Regular algebra. Guys, this is the only manipulation of this formula you're going to have to do. Okay? It either solves for n, the way it's set up originally, or you do this to solve for little m. Big M you can always get from your periodic table. You'll never use this formula to solve for it. Okay? Now when we get to physics and we have to use v equals d over t, I'll show you how to solve for the one on the bottom. It's not hard. Okay? It's just a little bit of algebra. Okay? This should not intimidate you. Okay? It isn't hard. Okay, you're just moving stuff around. Everybody with me so far? Well, that's good. It should. Okay, now, here's the thing. More good news for you. There are only four ways for me to ask you a mole equation question. Only four. 
I'm going to show you how to solve all four this morning. Okay, so you can watch this podcast and see all four ways you could possibly be asked about the mole equation on a quiz or unit exam. I'll do the same thing tomorrow. Then you will have eight examples of the way that you can solve the only four okay, ways I can ask you. All right, on your unit exam, I'll ask you three. Because I have your unit exam made up, I asked three. Okay, three different ways. All right, there's only four, and I'm only going to ask you three of them. All right, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to write this example down, and you're going to write down everything I do here, okay, so that you have that in your notes, okay, for each and every one of the ways I can ask you about the mole equation. No. All right. Whenever we're solving a problem, okay, a word problem, be it in, in the mole equation or in physics, okay, in any number of ways, okay, one of the first things you want to do is write down what we call in science your givens. Okay? Your givens are the things the question outright gave you okay, um, in the question. So that's what we want first. Okay? First thing it says is how many moles? What, which part of that formula represents moles? N, little m, or big M? N. Okay, so N is a question mark. They're asking me how many. I know that's not one of my givens. Okay, it's a thing I'm going to have to solve for. Okay, then it tells me of calcium chloride, CaCl2. What will that formula help me find? Not, not the mass, a different one. The molar mass, right. It'll help me find capital M because it's calcium chloride. So what, what I'm going to do next is Figure out what's the molar mass of calcium chloride. All right, so we're going to have 40.08. Okay, that's the mass of calcium atom, plus two chlorines, 35.45 times two, 70.9, 110. Point, double check. I'm not good at math. Double check. I added that right. Okay, 110.98 grams per mole. Okay, so I've got my molar mass. The other thing they give me in the question, they tell me 90 grams. Well, that must be little m because it's the only thing I don't have. All right, 90 grams. Okay, little m is always in grams. So if you get something in grams, you know it's little m. Okay, if you're given the, the compound, you know that always goes with big M. Okay, moles always goes with n. All right, that is a mark. On a, qu on a test, on a quiz, one mark for givens, always. Okay, reason we give you a mark for that, usually it helps you figure out the next step, which is, what formula do I use? Well, in this case, that's a dead giveaway because there's only one mole equation, okay? And so this is the formula you're going to be using. N equals little m over big M. Do I have to manipulate the equation at all? No, it's already set up to solve for what I want, okay? So this is the easiest type of mole equation question. All I have to do is plug in my numbers. 90, for, 90 grams for little m. And 110.98, okay, for uh, grams per mole for big M. All right, so 90 divided by 110.98 is 0.81 moles. And again, two decimal places will be fine, okay, for what we're doing here. 0.81 moles. All right, so one mark for givens. You'd get one mark for your insertion of variables or calculation, okay, whatever, and one mark for your final answer. That would be a three-mark question. Should you show your work? Absolutely you should, because if all you write down is the answer and you accidentally pu punched one number wrong into your calculator, what will you get? Zero. Okay, show your givens, that's the easiest of all marks, okay, never leave something blank, write down your givens, okay, second thing, show your work, show your math, that's another mark, or maybe two, depending on how long the question is, and your answer, three marks, okay, everyone follow me there, all right, okay, can I move on to the second one, all right, so, next question, what is the mass of 4.5 moles, all right, moles is? Which variable? Little m, big M, n? N. N equals 4.5 moles. 
all right, of magnesium bromide. And this is how I would do this on a unit exam or a quiz. I would not give you the formula. Okay? I would give you the name. Is it important to be able to swap and drop and write formulas correctly for these kind of calculations? It is, because this is what I see often. Okay? Someone goes, M, okay, magnesium bromide, MGBR, and then they figure out the molar mass. But this is a plus 2 and that's a minus 1. The proper formula is MGBR2. If they don't swap and drop, they come up light on the molar mass, and then they don't get anything else right after that. Okay? So being able to write formulas correctly is crucial for being able to use the mole equation. All right, so we got 24.31, I think, is the molar mass for magnesium, okay, plus 2 bromine, 79.90 times 2. Okay, so big M, 24.31 plus 79.9 times 2 is 184.11. Grams per mole. Okay, so basically that's telling me 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of magnesium bromide have a mass of 184.11 grams per mole. All right, so now I've got N and I've got big M. What was I asked to find? Little m. All right, so I got to manipulate a little bit. That's no problem. N equals little m over big M. All right, if I want to get little m by itself or isolate little m, okay, I need to move big M. If I want to move something, I do the... Okay, I do the same thing to both sides, but first I have to do the opposite. Then I do the opposite to both sides. Okay, so multiply both sides by M. Okay, M cancels on that side. M comes over here. Big M times little n gives us little m. So 184.11 is big M, grams per mole. Okay, times 4.5 moles, which was the n given to us in the question. Okay, and that'll give us our final answer. Just a minute, Joshua. I'll go back up in a minute. Okay, so we're looking at 828.5 grams. 184. Okay, and this is just grams. Again, okay, I'm calculating mass. I've got to have the right units okay, on here. All right? Mark's distribution. One mark for calculating molar mass, your givens, okay? Um, one mark for your manipulation of the formula, okay? Sometimes I give another mark after that for the insertion of your actual numbers, okay? And one for your final answer. So likely a four mark question, possibly a three mark question, but most likely a four mark. Anna. Yeah, to two decimal places. Most of the time, that's what it's going to come out to anyway. Okay. No, you can just show me the manipulated equation. That's fine. Okay, any other questions on the second one? All right. Now, three and four have one extra step. Okay, three and four both use Avogadro's number. All right? Anytime a question talks about the number of molecules or the, or the number of atoms or particles of any kind, you're going to be using Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So we're going to use this number. Remember, what does this number represent? This is the number of particles in one mole. All right, so this equals one mole. All right. So if I was trying to find out how many molecules were in this many grams, if I could find the number of moles, could I multiply the number of moles I get by the number of particles in one mole and figure out how many particles I have? Let me say that differently. Let's say that someone tells me that they have three dozen donuts and I want to figure out how many donuts they actually have. What do I do? 3 times 12. Exactly. I take the number of the dozen they told me, and I multiply it by how many are in a dozen. Okay? We'd be doing the same thing for this question. I'd find the number of moles and multiply that number by how many moles or how many there are in one mole. And that'll give me the total number that I have. 
Okay, in the same way that multiplying 3 by 12 told me how many there were in three dozen. Okay, if I had three moles, I'd go three times that number, and that would tell me how many I actually had. Everyone follow me? Okay, so that's kind of going to be kind of our extra step. It looks like this. You can calculate N, okay, by taking the number of particles, okay, molecules in this case, and dividing it by Avogadro's number. In this question, we're trying to find the number of particles. So to get particles by itself, I multiply both sides by Avogadro's number. Okay? All right, so let's write down our givens here. We're looking for a number of molecules. We know little m is 600 grams. Okay? And we know that the material we're dealing with is silver nitrate. All right, so silver is Ag, nitrate is NO3. That's a minus one, and that's a plus one, so that compound is fine the way I have it written. Okay, mass of silver, 107.87? Is that right? I think it is. Plus one nitrogen, 14.01, plus three oxygen, 16 times three is 48. All right, so now I can calculate big M. Someone punch that in, just confirm. I think that's what it is. And that's not because I did that in my head. I remember that from last period, but I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Okay. I'm not good at math, but I have a really good memory. Okay. That's how I got through university calculus. I memorized all the examples in the textbook, wrote them down on the final exam, and got part marks for method. Don't do that, because it might not work for you. <laughs> that's how I got through university calculus. Okay, all right, so now I know big M. Okay, I've got big M, I've got little m. I'm still trying to find number of molecules. What can I find with little m and big M, though? N, yeah, okay, I can use the mole equation and get N. That's probably a good place to start since I can calculate the number of particles if I know N. All right, so I'm just going to plug in here. Okay, M was 600 grams. Okay, M was 169.88. Uh, I think that's 3.5 or something like that. Yeah, 3.53. All right, so we got 3.53 moles. Okay, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 is how many there are in one mole. And I have 3.53 moles. If I multiply those two numbers together, will I get the number of molecules? Yes, I will. In the same way that if someone told me they had four dozen and I multiplied four by 12, I would get 48. That's how many there are in four dozen. Okay? If I want to find out how many there are in 3.53 moles, I take 3.53 and multiply by how many there are in one mole. Okay? By doing that, I should get how many total particles there are. All right, so number of particles. Okay, equals 3.53 times Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Now, you're probably wondering, how do I punch that number into my calculator? I'm so glad you asked, because it's a little bit tricky. Okay? And it depends on what kind of calculator you have. If you have a scientific non-TI-83 calculator, look on your calculator for one of two things. Either you will have a button that looks like this. Or you'll have a button that looks like this. Okay, look for those. They may even be on some calculators the second function okay, of a button. On a TI-83, it's actually the second function of a button. All right, you're going to use those buttons okay, to enter in exponents. Okay, 6.02 is what you would type in with brackets. Okay, so you go bracket 6.02 and then you would press either one of these two buttons. Usually your calculator will put a little e there, okay? Or it'll put a times 10 or something like that. It'll usually give you some indication, okay? And then you type in 23 and close the brackets off. Now you've typed Avogadro's number into your calculator. If you got a TI-83, it looks like this. Brackets 6.02 Hit the second function button, and down here on the comma, right above, 
you see capital E, capital E. Press that and it gives you a capital E. That capital E means times 10. All right, now you enter the power, 23, and brackets. Okay, now I can multiply that by the 3.53 I calculated earlier, and I get 2.13 times 10 to the 24 molecules of silver nitrate. Okay, so I get 2.13 times 10 to the 24 okay, molecules. Notice that I still put units on. If I just write on here 2.13 times 10 to the 24, I don't know what that is. Okay, make sure you tell me it's molecules. Okay, now I see a few people looking at that and go, why did, it, why did it suddenly switch to 10 to the 24? Here's why. When I multiply 6 by 3, does it give me a number greater than 10? It does. Okay, so really this number is 21.3 times 10 to the 23. But we don't write things in scientific notation that way. It's always a number between 1 and 10. Right? So we move the decimal one spot over, and this number gets one time bigger. Okay, it's times 10. Now there's another 10. Okay, so it's 2.13 times 10 to the 24 now. Okay. That's as tough as they get. Okay, that's the toughest one. Number four is actually a little easier. Anyone need that one anymore? No, don't put in a 10. Okay, this, it, sometimes your calculator will show that. It depends on what kind of calculator. Some of them have a little indicator that goes times 10, and some of them just put an E. Most just put an E. Okay, yeah, don't put in another 10, because if you do, you've gone 6.02 times 10, times 10 to the power of 23, and that's times 10 to the 24. That's different. Okay. All right. Last one. What's the mass? So in this question, we're being asked to find little m. And they gave us the number of particles this time. Okay? They're telling us it's 1.54 times 10 to the 25. So one of the givens is number of particles. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to show you Mark's distribution on number three. Okay, one mark for givens. Okay, you would get one mark um, for doing the uh, mole calculation here. Okay, you didn't have to manipulate, so it's just one mark for doing the mole calculation. Okay, one mark for this operation here, where you calculated the number of particles. Okay, and then one mark for your answer. Sometimes I give you another mark for plugging in the numbers, but okay, probably most of the time that would be a four mark question. No, I have to give you full marks if you get the right answer. However, if all you show is your answer and it isn't right, you get a good big goose egg. So show your work. Okay? Because I will not feel sorry for you. Okay? If you don't show your work and you get the answer wrong, okay? That's all that's all you deserve. All I know is you wrote down a number that wasn't right. Okay? I can't give you anything if you don't show me anything. All right? Okay, so back to number four here. We write down our givens. Okay, number of particles is here, and this is in molecules for units. And they told me it's diphosphorus tetraiodide, which means I can calculate big M. Diphosphorus is P2, tetraiodide is I4. All right, so phosphorus is 30.97, is that right? And there's two of those, plus 126 point something. Nine zero, and there are four of those. Okay, so this is a heavy atom or a heavy molecule. Okay, thirty point nine seven times two, okay, is sixty one point nine four plus all of the iodines one twenty six okay, point nine times four. All right, so five hundred and sixty nine point five four grams per mole. Okay, so that's all the stuff I'm given. There's one mark. I'm being asked to find little m. 
What else do I need in order to get little m? n. All right. I can get n if I have the number of particles. Okay, because we said before the number of moles is how many particles I have divided by the number of particles in one mole. Okay, in the same way that if you go 48 over 12, you get four dozen. Everybody follow me there? Okay, that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking the number of particles I have and dividing by how many there are in one mole. Okay, so n is going to equal, in this case, 1.54 times 10 to the 25 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That will give me n. All right, how do I punch that into my calculator? Do not forget the brackets. If you forget brackets, your calculator defaults to order of operations. Okay, and in order of operations, you do parentheses first, exponents second, multiplication and division third, and addition and subtraction last. You guys remember those order of operations? Okay, if I don't put brackets, okay, around my numbers, and I just go like this, 1.54 e25 divided by 6.02 E23, my calculator thinks that everything after the 25 is part of the exponent. And it will not spit out the right answer. Everyone follow me? Okay, so it is vital that you put in brackets. Okay, so now I'm dividing those two numbers, and I get that this is 25.58 moles. All right, so I know that N is 25.58 moles. Now that I know N and big M, can I, can I calculate little m? Yes, I have to manipulate the mole equation, but I can do it. N equals little m over big M. I'm trying to get little m by itself, so I multiply both sides by big M. Okay, now I'm solving for little m. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 569.54, the number of moles, or sorry, the, sorry, the molar mass multiplied by the number of moles, 25.58. Okay, and then we're going to be dealing with a large number here. Fourteen thousand five hundred and sixty nine point six three grams. So fourteen and a half kilograms worth of this stuff. Okay, so a lot. Okay, important again to have the units on there. Those are the only four ways I can ask you the mole equation. The only thing that will differ on your exam is what material I ask you about. The method is the same for all four. Okay, questions on those? Okay, so on this worksheet here, guys, number one often confuses people because they overthink it. How many particles of anything in one mole? How many of something in one mole? What's Avogadro's number? 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Doesn't matter what material I'm dealing with, that's how many particles are in one mole. Okay, so looking at number 1A, how many atoms of gold are there in one mole? 6.02 times 10 to the 23. What if I had to put in there iron instead? Same thing. Doesn't matter what material I'm dealing with. Avogadro's number is the magic number. That's how many of anything there are in one mole. Okay? Always, always, always. All right? So in fact, in question number one, these here are all just to distract you. The material makes no difference. It's saying, here's how many moles you have, 
How many particles is that? So if this is the number of moles, what do I do with that, with that and Avogadro's number? Multiply them. Right. Okay? Don't overthink it. Right? If you have two dozen, you have 24. 2 times 12. Well, if I have 2.5 moles, that's 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay? When you want to find the number of atoms or molecules, you multiply by Avogadro's number, regardless of the material. Okay? In number two, okay, you're going to have to use the mole equation, but you're solving for moles, right? So that one's pretty easy, okay? Number three, you're using the mole equation again, but this time you're solving for mass, which is little m, okay? And then from there on out, it's basically just switching around, asking you for one thing or another, still using the mole equation the rest of the worksheet. All right, so you guys can get started on that. Okay, key is... In science 10, notes and assignments, where everything is in chemistry. And it's about halfway down. Uh, keys. Keys, keys. No. Uh, to all mole equation worksheets. So right there. Keys to all mole equation worksheets. All right, so you can find it right underneath the last chemistry quiz kind of thing in there. Okay, so you can check as you go. I would say do like two or three and check. Do two or three and check. Okay. Don't, but remember, if you get one wrong, don't just go, oh, yeah, and write down the right answer. Figure out why you did it wrong. If you can't figure out why you got it wrong, call me over, okay, and I'll help you figure it out. All right. You start on that. That's what we'll be working on the rest of the day today and tomorrow.